Bethany Ann realized she was hearing weapons fire. Her face crackled with energy, the red lines etching into it, eyes blazing and hair flying on a wind of her own as she sought the location of those attacking. While she might not have a weapon, they did, and soon her people would be armed as well, with weapons taken from the corpses of those stupid enough to fire on them, especially since they had been warned by Nathan's team months ago. It's about damned time. She glanced quickly at John. He had a bad burn on his leg, and it looked like the beam had made it into muscle. She was sure it was healing, but it probably still hurt like a son of a bitch. Two attackers came through the main doors, holding what looked like some kind of submachine guns. She focused on the guns and pushed energy to heat them. The mercenaries dropped their weapons, screaming in pain and frustration as a couple of their friends bumped into them from behind. One had bad trigger control and ripped a few rounds off right into his buddy's back. They must be noobs. She grabbed the swords that had lain on the table and turned over her shoulder. Scott! The erstwhile New York policeman turned toward her, seeing the sheathed sword already halfway to him in the air. He reached up with his left hand, caught the sheath, and pulled out the katana with his right as he twisted. He continued his spin, swinging the sword to slice off the arm of a mercenary who had come through a side door. Scott kicked the screaming Noel knee back through the door, shattering it as he bent down to grab the attacker's pistol. Behind you! Scott heeded Daryl's warning. He flipped the sword and jabbed it backward while keeping his head low, and he felt the sword hit flesh. He turned to see a Leith who had decided to jump into the fight. Hold this a moment. The Leith was staring in confusion at the sword through his body. Scott pulled the fingers and hand off the recovered pistol and dropped the severed arm, gripping the pistol in his right hand. With his left, he grabbed the hilt of the sword. Thank you. I'll take this back now. He lashed out with his boot, kicking the leaf off the sword. He smiled in glee. Now he was doubly armed. He looked around to make sure Bethany Ann was safe and found Daryl fighting to her right, blazing away with two pistols. You greedy ass! How'd you get two? Scott heard John to his left and turned to see what the commotion was, then ducked the body flying over him. Don't kick the godverdamned leg! John was yelling at the alien who landed at a five-foot diameter potted plant. The vase cracked, and so did the alien's skull. (coughs) It fucking hurts. Scott raised the pistol and shot three times through the small side door, then turned and ran toward Bethany Ann. Bethany Ann, there have been a number of distress calls from the engine deck. What the hell does a hotel need with an engine deck? She casually shot two more mercenaries who poked their heads into the room. She looked at Daryl. That's 14 and 15. Seventeen! You failed to kill this one! Daryl was smiling ear to ear. What? The hotel floats using the power from the engine room. These mouth breathers are trying to drop the hotel. She looked to her left. Eric, keep it safe here with John. I'm taking Scott and Daryl for a little R&R. He nodded. Scott kicked a pistol lying on the floor toward his team. Reconnaissance and retribution tasking, here we come. He and Daryl had hot-footed it over to Bethany Ann, who grabbed them both and disappeared. The three mercenaries who had seen the three humans disappear gawked. One immediately died from a slug through the skull. It blew out the back of his head, which splattered one of the female hotel staff, who had been standing frozen near the wall with the others. She fainted, slumping to the floor.